Welcome to this example of using Autodesk Design Validation on a Brake Assembly. Here the engineering team has been challenged with investigating the reliability and performance of the brake rotor. In the past, the rotors that haven't performed well led to excessive and expensive warranty claims due to warpage, cracks, and uneven wear on brake pads. The challenge extends beyond a simple linear static analysis of the braking forces. What happens when the friction heats the material? How are the rising temperatures going to affect the stress results? Autodesk meets this challenge and takes us beyond the capabilities of a physical test. Find out what the heat transfer looks like without the applied forces. This is a great way to test the component's ability to cool with convection. For the first analysis, we will apply the boundary conditions that simulate the component's ability to cool, as well as the amount of heat being generated from the friction between the brake pads and the rotor. These real-world conditions are associated with the geometry, meaning if there are any changes to the design, they will remain intact. All that is left is to mesh or break the model up into several pieces to be analyzed. This model takes about one minute to solve. Let's take a look at the results for temperature. The plot that you are about to see will provide the non-uniform temperature distribution that can be used as a load in the thermal expansion study. We can see some of the heat is transferred to the veins inside the rotor. We can now set up the linear static study using these temperatures and apply the torque load as the vehicle comes to a stop. First, we need to hold the part down by fixing the holes where the rotor is fastened to the other parts in the brake assembly. We could use bolt connectors in this case if we included the hub in the analysis. Be sure to watch the video on bolt connectors to see how they work in Autodesk NASTrain NCAD. Now the load coming from the brake pads is flexible with the use of rigid body connectors. Create line elements to the axis of the rotor so we can apply the load as a torque value. The process of creating connectors is intuitive, as it automatically finds the center of any selected object that we can use as a selection point for the load. Next, we are ready to add the torque value for the rigid connectors. We will apply an extreme load condition of 100 newton millimeters, or about 1 million inch-pounds to both sides of the rotor. Subcases in the FEA browser are a great way to evaluate more than one scenario at a time and compare the results between them. Here we are going to create three of them. The first one you see is analyzing the torque load alone. The second subcase will include the thermal load which comes from the previous study results. When applying the load, you will see the option to select the result file that was created when the analysis was complete. The third subcase is the thermal load by itself without the torque. After duplicating the last one, we will simply delete the two load conditions that we copied over. That is all we need for setting up the linear static study. We are using the same mesh size as the thermal analysis. This analysis also takes about one minute to solve. Let's take a look at the results using temperature as the only load condition. Starting with the displacement plot, we are observing a deflection of a fraction of a millimeter due to thermal expansion. Next, we will find out how that displacement is affecting the stresses in the model. We are seeing high stress in the arc between each fastener as well as the areas behind the fastener. Next, we will look at the stresses with the torque load only. We can see here the veins on the inside of the rotor are absorbing some of the stress. And finally, let's look at the stresses caused by a combination of the torque load and the thermal expansion. Notice the stresses at every other extrusion for the bolts are higher due to the placement of the veins. Perhaps by adding another vein in between, we can evenly distribute the stress. The changes that we make can be reanalyzed right inside the CAD design environment. There is no need to send the model back and forth between applications. That being said, we can easily check the file out of the vault as we plan to document and save changes to the design. Here we will simply open the rotor in its own window and increase the number of veins for better stress results. Then, after the study has been run, we can view the updated results for the new design. Looking again at the stress results with torque, we can see the extra veins in between evenly distribute the stress at each of the extruded bosses for the fasteners. This workflow encourages designers to make several improvements in a short amount of time. See plots for all the study types in a matter of minutes, as opposed to the time-consuming task of building and testing several generations of physical prototypes. 
After modifying the geometry, they were able to come up with the best design possible. Finally, the engineer will wrap this up and communicate the reason for the change to the rest of the team during check-in. The ability to design, test, and manage your designs is available now. Autodesk is your trusted solution for making better products. It is the future of making things.